This week on Archer's Choice. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. Archer's Choice. This week. Oh, it's going to start early. This week we are in Illinois, finally our home state, and we are hunting with Eagle Lakes Outfitters, Ted and Tina, down in Pike County, Illinois. Yes, but this week's lucky logo is Cabela's. Cabela's. So you want to look for the Cabela's logo, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. Our favorite place to shop. Yeah, I know. We can't go anywhere without you stopping. You you do the same thing. Now they got all that ladies section, you're like, oh, wrong with the home shopping. decor, you're like, oh, let's go check. <laughs> no. Well, we're going to head down to Ted and Tina's. Ted and Tina's. And this is, believe it or not, Vicky's had a hard time, even in our home state. Really, it's Actually, been tough. Actually, I've only had a hard time in our home state. Yeah. yeah. And it's just because when we finally do get home in the fall, there's so many other things to do. Clean RJ. the house, laundry. Well, RJ's first, but. Cook, clean, bring home the bacon. I mean, I got to do it all. And I finally got out and into the stands. Let's watch what happens. What that did? Just stuck his finger in the middle of Ralph's sandwich. <laughs> Did he really? Yes. And you know, well, that finger was. Fingers. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> it's only peanut butter and jelly. It'll be fixed. All right. All right. Fix my sign. <laughs> 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 I've been doing that all day. <laughs> Tina gave me Larry the Buck. It's her dad's decoy, and she said, Vicki, it's going to bring you luck. It brought me luck last year. You need to use it. It's November 15th. We're down here at Eagle Lakes Outfitters down in Pike County, Illinois. We've still got a lot of wind. At least the sun is shining today. Yesterday it was cold and miserable, but we saw a lot of deer. We actually just sat on the other side, just west of us, on the other side of this hedgerow in front of us. We saw a lot of bucks and a lot of does on this side. We're set up. Our wind is blowing away from where we saw them yesterday. We'll sit tight and see what happens. Obviously, Larry the Buck worked. We had this Forky come in, and he was just wanting to pick a fight with Larry.
I actually took one of the antlers off of him to make him look a little bit, like he might be an aggressive buck, he's not gonna, you know, turn down anyone, any fights, but at the same time, he's a young buck, so a bigger buck shouldn't feel intimidated whatsoever by this buck. Sure enough, a little while later, look what happens. Look at this. A beautiful, beautiful Pike County. 10 point down here at Eagle Lakes Outfitters. Ted and Tina, thank you so much for allowing Ralph and I and all of our guys to come out here and hang with you guys. You're awesome, awesome people. This buck here means a lot to me. I broke my jinx, my eye jinx. It's been since 1999 since I shot a buck in Illinois. It's 2010. Thanks to Tina. She let me use her dad's decoy, that's Larry the Buck, and Larry the Buck broke my jinx, so thank you, Tina, so much. It's been a crazy couple weeks, and we all need to remember to count our blessings every day. And this right here is definitely a blessing, and just want to thank the big guy upstairs for giving me the opportunity and allowing him to come in. What a beautiful, beautiful 10 point. Look at him. Way to go, Vixter. That was so, oh, Vixen, sorry. But it really was really cool. Yes. Oh, yeah. Is, you know, again, what's crazy in all of our travels, everyone goes, you guys are from Illinois. You know, oh my gosh, Pike County. Every, you know, and, and it is. Pike County is probably, it is a premier area. But you know what? But. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, we do. We do. It's all fun. It is. You know, and I mean, even, you know, Ted sticking his finger in my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That was gross. That was really, ugh. That was gross, but good. Ugh. Hey, now, Jeremy from Hoyt. Yep. He's gonna fly in from Utah, and he is gonna head out to the stand, and we're gonna see how he does. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy had two coyotes in, remember? Yeah. Two. 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 Okay, well. And we won't say any. <coughs> I'm choking. <coughs> ugh. Ted just came to pick us up, so we're just gonna grab the coyote. He didn't go far as you saw, so just grab him and then head out of here. Living here in the Midwest, we deal with a lot of different ag crops out there all season long, and as soon as those crops are down, that's when those deer are gonna start coming into our food plots. One of the things that we like is we've got small tracks of timber. We put out our HS winter forage food plots got some clover, got some turnips. We know those deer are gonna wanna come in here and when we get heavier snowfall, we wanna make sure we place those food plots close to their bedding areas to make sure they don't have to travel that far and they can remain healthy all year long. That's your bow hunting world tip of the week. Well, Jeremy, he's been out there for three days already and on the fourth day, his Hoyt is burning a hole in his hand. He wants to get something back so bad. And finally, this morning, he's seeing a ton of deer activity.
Ouais. We just shot a buck. He came out of the corner and was right on top of us super quick. We didn't have time to really get ready. But uh, he looked like a really good eight. I hit back a little further than I was aiming. So I'm kind of concerned about the shot, but I'll give him some time. Go look at the footage and see see exactly where we hit him. But God, I wish I would have heard him go down and thrash around a little bit, you know. You know us. We're, you know we're not, we're, we're going to be honest with all of it. And like even Jeremy said, it, the shot was a little far back. So what is the best thing to do? They re, they they reviewed the footage, saw it. They said, let's give it a couple hours. Went back, talked to the guys, Ted and everybody, and they said, you know, let's give it a few hours. They waited. And you know what a perfect shot is? Recover the animal. sick all morning. I'm pumped. I am pumped. <laughs> oh, such a feeling of relief. You make a shot, you know it's not a good shot and you gotta just wait, wait, wait. What we give him? Six hours? Yeah, it's been six, seven hours. It's two o'clock now. I shot him at eight. So six hours. Six hours. And he didn't go but, I don't know, 100 yards? Well, yes, you you never know though, you know. He could have gone half a mile. So We did the right thing, getting out of there, giving him time. Good luck. <laughs> oh, man. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Bob. Thanks. Congratulations, Jeremy. Yeah, buddy. He you, hit more than Hoyt. He, wow, that was pretty quick. Thanks. You know what, though? He also shows us why you need multiple arrow quivers. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. Sure. Just kidding. It was, him. it was him. But he did honestly show us. When in doubt, get out. He backed out. Perfect. Six hours, went back in, recovered that buck. Absolutely perfect. That's a true bow hunter. That's no true. one shot placement. Get out, come back. You got your game. Speaking, that is the ticket. Speaking of perfect, should we go to December hunt? Late season, two feet of snow. Gee, who's the perfect one in the tree this time? Oh, you think you're perfect. Watch this. <laughs> We head out there, we get, we get all these clothes on, and well, lo and behold, we get there, and the wind ain't what it's supposed to be on the computer. Well, what we wanted to do, Kenneth and I, well, Vicky was gonna drop us off. Everything was showing south, southeast, on the computers. And then when we, we finally got out, we got all dressed up, we got out here, and we have a northeast. There is no doubt in my mind, it's northeast. The problem is, is the bedding air, the bedding area is right is directly downwind. So what we did is we backed out. Even though it hurt, we backed out. So cancel your date or whatever you were oh, gonna do. We've got to set up our food plots for that late, late season where all the crops are down and they're relying on one source, the source that we planted. And our HS winter forage is just that. The big thing with this is as long as you don't bump them out of there on a continuous basis, you keep that food plot near the bedding area because they don't want to travel a lot, especially in that thick snow. They know that they got to keep that body weight on. You could be in for the best winter hunts of your entire career.
Oh, can it? Look at that. Yesterday I wanted to get in the stand so bad. I've been waiting for the winds and we had that storm moving in and we knew the deer would hit our, be, be on our HS food plots. We knew it. And uh, lo and behold, we got here. The computer, on the computer and on the weather channel, they were telling us one thing. We got here and the wind was totally different and I backed out. And I'm like, oh, I, I, oh, you just wait for it. Well, tonight the wind was right. We got in here and we were absolutely, absolutely rewarded. What a beautiful, magnificent animal. Congratulations. I love late season. And when you got your HS food plots in the right place, real close to those bedding areas with that snow, it's only gonna create we success. Up, we should have put up that caution, warning, warning, three days after knee surgery, you can ruin your knee by deer hunting in two feet of snow. We probably should have put that across the bottom of the screen, but congratulations. I knew it meant a lot for you to get back out before the end of the season really and did. snowing on your food. Because when you, you know, you work all year, yeah. to, and, and that late season to me, I'd rather hunt that than the rut. Mm -hmm. So, so you guys let it, letting me go. I appreciate you it. Let him go. So it was all good. And you know, we had a good show. I like that show. It was good. Yes. Hey, Ted, Tina, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eagle Lakes. Lake. You got to go down there. Check it out. That's right. And if you happen to see the lucky logo, which was Cabela's, favorite place to shop, baby. You need to log on to Archer'sChoice.com. Click on the lucky logo button. Fill out the information. And with some really cool great stuff. Stuff from Cabela's. Yes. Next week we're gonna head up to Northern Alberta. Northern. Up with Big Bear Country Outfitters with Freddie and Timmy. They shoot some. The big, big boys from Illinois are going up there because they're two big boys. They are, but there's no noise in Illinois. Remember that, okay? Thank you. So we'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here. On, on the Archer's Choice. Choice. <laughs>